Welcome back. This is an Alex training video on interconverting temperatures in Celsius and Kelvins. Celsius was designed around water. So water freezes at what in Fahrenheit is 32 degrees Fahrenheit and boils at 212 Fahrenheit. The idea of Celsius is that you take the boiling point of water and make it 100. You take the freezing point of water, make it zero, and then there are 100 degrees between freezing of water and boiling of water. So there is a width, that degree has a width, equal to 100th of the difference between freezing and boiling of water. Now, Kelvin is considered an absolute scale. An absolute scale means you can't have a negative Kelvin. You could have a, a temperature that's colder than the freezing point of water. So you can have a temperature that's negative something Celsius but you can't have a negative Kelvin. First thing to note is that it's degrees Celsius, it's degrees Fahrenheit, but it's simply Kelvin. You would say it's 73 Kelvin or whatever. All right, so Kelvin we're gonna see is an absolute temperature scale. And by absolute here, we're talking about molecular motion. It, molecules have energy and the energy then make motion. So if you were to say take ice and add energy, those molecules are going to come out of the matrix and slide around each other and, and have more energy and slosh around as liquid. And then if you continue to give energy, it's going to bang around on the sides of the container till it's a gas. So if you were to have absolute zero, which is Kelvin scale, you're really, that scale is talking about motion of molecules. So there's no energy at all in that molecule that it, it can even jitter in place. It's not going to bang against the side of the container. It's not even going to jitter. It's not even going to, to, to move at all. It has no energy. Well, the boiling point of water, or the freezing point of water, is zero degrees Celsius. The freezing point of water is 273.15 Kelvin. That means if you can continue down to 200, 150, 150, 25, down to zero, you're removing energy, removing energy, and eventually you get down to zero Kelvin. There is no motion, no molecular motion. So if you are going to want, so if these two things are equal to each other, I want to go from Kelvin to Celsius, it would be the same as going from 273.15 to zero. And to do that, I would subtract 273.15. If I want to go from Celsius to Kelvin, just like in this box, I would go from, I would add 273 to, to Celsius, and I would say 0 plus 273 equals 273.15 Kelvin. So in this case, they're asking you to convert, um, it says, what is the temperature range? Write your answer in Kelvins and in degrees Celsius. So you're interconverting. So if you're in Kelvin, you want to subtract 273.15. If you're in Celsius, you want to add 273.15. In this problem, they're asking uh, for a range that they've got in a picture. It says, what is the temperature range of the parts of Phoebe's surface shown in red in this case? So I look here at red and I say it's from 85 to 90 Kelvin right? 85 is less, so it's colder. So 85 Kelvin, and then it goes all the way up to 90 Kelvin. This is 85 Kelvin to 90 Kelvin. And they're asking, what is this in Celsius? So 85, of course, is positive because there is no negative Celsius. But this is very, very cold, and it's going to be less than zero in Celsius. It's very, very below the freezing point of water. So how do I do it? I need to subtract 273. Okay, so if I, sub, if I subtract 273 from 85, okay, so 85 minus 273.15 is gonna be negative 188.15 degrees Celsius. If you take 90 Kelvin and subtract 273.15, you get negative 183.15. So 183 is warmer than 188 when it's negative. OK, 
okay, because the it's going backwards from zero. So 183 would be warmer, 188 would be colder. So the range is going to be from one, negative 188.15 Celsius to negative 183.15 Celsius.